This video is about concrete air-filled pavements, and some of the unique challenges with them. I'm lucky, I have a research project right now with FAA and the US Department of Defense. What are they all about? They're trying to bring the dream crete to air-filled concrete pavements. Isn't that gonna be awesome? We're so excited. I wanna tell you about this project and what it's gonna be all about. Well, this is air-filled concrete pavements, right? Airplanes, like big airplanes, land on them, take off on them. This is big concrete. Usually it's about three times the thickness of normal concrete and it's placed with concrete slip form pavers, a lot like you would do for a road. But again, this has some extremely unique challenges. It's much, much thicker material, much, much more challenging material and you need it to really perform for a long period of time. And this is why you don't use asphalt. <laughs> we gotta have concrete for these air filled pavements. These are massive, massive loads. Gotta make sure we get this stuff right. So this is a challenging project and we are starting at the beginning of the Dreamcrete challenge and you have to first decide what it is you want. And then number two, of course, use better tests to get better answers. And let's focusing on these unique challenges for air filled pavements. Now air filled pavements have all of the same problems as normal concrete pavements, freeze thaw problems, alkali silica reaction problems. They have shrinkage issues. They have all those normal issues, but they have some unique ones as well. Very, very unique ones for air filled pavements. And they have to worry about something called FOD, foreign object debris. And this is loose material that's sucked up in the engine um, of a plane. It is a bad deal. Like I'm talking about an engine, right? And as that engine is going and running, air is moving from one side of the engine to the other engine. And you can see on the left, there's a line of, of high suckage, right? <laughs> Sucks up whatever it possibly can. Here's something got sucked up one of those food containers. Ah, I don't wanna eat that food anymore. I don't even wanna go on that plane anymore. Yuck, that's some FOD, right? But it doesn't have to be big stuff. Can be small stuff, but what in the world does concrete have to do with this? Well, if I have some little pieces or chunks of concrete that are coming up off the surface, that is no bueno, that is no good, that will get sucked into my engine, it will cause damage, and it may cause planes to crash. It has caused planes to crash, and it's estimated every year that the world spends four billion dollars per year, that's US dollars out there in FOD damage, at least that was what was reported in 2002. So this is is a big expensive deal that is unique to air filled pavements. Now, how are we gonna get this right? How are we gonna really understand this? Well, this mechanism is called sliver spalling, okay? Very unique name, sliver spalling, and here's kind of how it works. First, you have some kind of concrete deficiency that usually leads to these little slivers that are spalling. It could be at a joint, it could be at a crack. And then once you combine those little bitty deterioration mechanisms that with super high edge loading, that is when we create the FOD and cause problems. What am I talking about? Well, if I have a little bit of problems at a corner of a joint, I have a massive, massive load on that joint. It can cause, <gasps> gosh, a crack and that causes FOD that can get sucked up into my engine and that is no good. Ah! <laughs> but it doesn't have to be something about this edge deterioration like this. It can also come about when I have my edges that are not close to one another. One edge is higher than another and um, see the difference in height there. And what happens is that snow plows or it doesn't have to be a snow plow, it could be any vehicle, but snow plows commonly do it, could be big planes running over it again and again and again because there is a high spot and a low spot. It wears it, it spalls off regions, it causes more FOD. No, more problems, more challenges. It is a big deal and you want this edge slumping to be minimal, like less than an eighth of an inch between the high one and the low one. So what causes this sliver spalling? Well, it could be patches in the concrete you have to make where when you're finishing it, there's voids in the concrete. It didn't uh, um, consolidate well. So you have to come back in, fill those in, in with grout and they may, they may pop out. It could be repairing an edge slump. See how this edge slumping is not straight. See how it wanders, 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 wanders. Well, as you have to push that up or put more mortar on top, that can spall and deteriorate and cause problems 
could be because normal durability damage, maybe from decracking, maybe from freeze thaw, maybe from alkali silica reaction that gets loaded again and again and again that causes these these spalls to happen. Could be from some place where they had to, they've already repaired a joint. They've come back in with this material and tried to fix a joint, and notice it just doesn't last as long. It's not as durable. It breaks up, breaks up, and then causes more fod damage. Could be just surface cracks. That's from poor consolidation inside the concrete, and these cracks kind of propagate up to the surface. And again, as the wheels go over them again and again and again, they'll cause these spalls and cause them to be sucked up into an engine or it could be segregation in the concrete. What? What am I talking about? Well, look, this is an air fill pavement. You thick sucker, isn't it? See all these rocks down here at the bottom? They've all fallen to the bottom. And see up here at the top, this is all mortar that's close to the top. This is a joint, and what this means is since there's not as many rocks at the top, it's not going to be as durable. It's not going to resist cracking or other problems that might happen in the surface of your concrete. Here is like a picture of it. This image on the left, it is segregated a lot. Notice this is mainly rocks in the bottom and mortar at the top. And over here at the right, the rocks are up at the top. That's what we want. We want the one on the right. If I was to take a ruler and measure the depth here, I would have a much, much deeper layer of mortar than on the left than on the right. We would like to have a very thin, an extremely thin layer of mortar at the surface in those rocks at the top. So how do you design concrete to minimize FOD? There are many ways to do it and ways to make it happen. What people do right now is they have very strict specifications, extremely strict specifications that are very prescriptive, as in you shall, you shall, you shall, again and again and again, and they look at the aggregate durability heavily, 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 heavily. Some of the most restrictive specifications in the world on aggregate, aggregate durability are made by the FAA and the DOD because they don't want to have any problems that cause pop-outs or other issues to cause FOD for their concrete. They focus on the mixed design, okay, and but there needs a little bit of improvement there. There is some edge slumping things that they do out there. They actually measure edge slumping in the field, how much that edge drops. They measure segregation by measuring the mortar layer in the field, or at least they think they do or they try to, and they definitely care about cracking. They will remove whole panels for cracking that happens inside of them. And this is fine. This is good. This has been serving them. But is there a way to do these better? And that's what this project is all about. The current specifications really wait and see if there's a problem. And then they try to adjust to it and move to it. What we're going to try to do is get ahead of things a little bit more. I'm not saying they're not, they're not ahead at all. We're just going to try to be ahead a little bit further to try to help head some of these issues off. And what is our research all about? What is it doing? We have an amazing team of awesome people together to work on this. And we are first and foremost coming up with a brand new mixed design procedure that's going to truly take into the aggregate gradation of the concrete, truly look at things in a lot greater detail and be able to predict some of these things like segregation and this edge slumping way before they ever happen. We're also going to develop mixed design testing tools to, to look at consolidation, look at finishing, look at segregation, look at edge slumping to quantify these things and ultimately design our mixture so that they don't happen or they minimize the chance for happening. So again, we're hoping to make sure everything going out into the field with a great concrete mixture. Then we're going to look at also in the mixed design, some new durability testing, probably borrow from our other PEM or Dreamcrete specifications we've seen out there um, 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 in the past. But this is going to be a big one. And this is arguably the most important thing that we're going to produce for them. You can make the great concrete. That's awesome. You can design the great concrete, but if you cannot produce it consistently, it means nothing. We're going to have some epic consistency tools to help them out in the field to evaluate this concrete and make sure things are right or make adjustments before the concrete's placed on the grade to get it to where it needs to be. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Have you ever worked on an air fill job? What do you think you'd be like to work on an air fill job? I think they're unique cool and fun, but I want to hear what you think. And of course, connect me with me on Instagram and Facebook at concrete.tyler. Take care, my concrete maniacs and poo!